Do you like that noir look, sort of? <laughs> well, it looks like you've got an extensive uh, LP collection, and oh, yes. it's very good. Do you know anything about what's happening in the industry? Actually, you know what? We'll start. We'll start there. You we're start uh, we're talking we're talking to because uh, we can edit this around. <laughs> yeah, we sure we're here talking to Billy Hancock. Uh, the man's been in music for four decades, maybe five. Four and a half. Four and a half. Um. Four and a half. <laughs> And, uh, Damn, I'm old, aren't I? Yeah, you're old. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're right on your tail. We're right on your tail. So let's start it now. Um, two things that you've brought up, uh, where you're playing and what's going on in the industry, because we're looking at some records. Um, so what is going on with records these days? I know vinyl's making a comeback, but what do you? Uh, let's yep, let's it hear is. it. Well, I'm playing everywhere, and uh, uh, I'm going to be putting up on my website and my MySpace, my 2009 schedule. And I hope to be doing quite a bit of touring. I got canceled on a couple of them this year, um, mostly due to airfare prices. Well, they're coming back down, aren't they? I they mean, the are now, yes. Good. But in the time that I was supposed to be in, not Europe, this time Asia, I was, uh, it, was uh, it was just through the roof. Gotcha. And... Uh, so uh, perhaps the uh, the overseas schedule will be a little more full this year. Mm -hmm. um, but last year I, I did manage to get in Helsinki and uh, you know, and 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 France, of course. Uh, France has always been sort of my third home. You know, I I, I, I there's a debate as to whether Washington D.C. or New York City are really home since I've spent about equal time you know, in the two places. We're claiming you. Okay, you we're, can. We're claiming you. They claim me, you can claim me. You were born in Alexandria? Uh, yes. We're, we got you. Yeah. So, um, and I want to I wanna hear more about the schedule, but, so vinyl. Vinyl. Yes. Well, um, I've done some research. I went online. There is a new type of vinyl now. And... It's already been introduced. We, we don't have to wait for it. You can go right out and get it. It's very expensive. Right. Um, it's called 180 gram vinyl. That's what it is. And it is a fairly lightweight, but thicker, very smooth, more akin to the old European vinyl. Like when you got a Beatles record on Capitol, it's exactly what you got. You got a Capitol record which could be injected, molded plastic like a toy. But if you bought the Parlophone counterpart, you got a good product. Preaching to the converted right oh, here. All right. <laughs> We're on the same page. Oh, no doubt. You could even look at it and see it was nice. The edges were perfectly smooth, not jagged like the American counterpart, right? You know? Oh, yeah. So that's the way the new stuff is. Now they have used some kind of I want to say Teflon, but we're not going to use that word because that's not what it is anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They've used some kind of coating on the new ones that make them, unless, I mean, unless you, you get out the grinder or something, they're virtually scratch-proof. They're not going to get paper scratches or scratches from a, a, a lightweight stylus. You, I mean, you'd, ha you'd have to work at it, yeah, okay? Yeah. Um, the reason for this format addition I'm not going to say change because we haven't changed anything yet. Right. A format addition or re or, or reintroduction. Let's call it that. Is that good? Reintroduction. Mm -hmm. Even though it's, it's, it's a little modified. Uh, is that CDs are not forever. Right. And uh, my brother was, uh, it, it was uh, horrified to find that um, some of the 20-year-old CDs he had, and he's meticulous about never touching the plain surface. Right. His don't even have a thumbprint anywhere on, much less scratch. He put it on, it was just like the da 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 da, -da right. the sound that they make, you know. He said, oh. So he says, maybe this has got some dust on it. No, it didn't. And uh, I don't know if he did it intentionally, but uh, he held it up in, to the light and he noticed that it was full of holes. The core, the uh, the actual yep. foil core was coming apart. 
and that's what happens to them. Yep. And it was predicted a long time ago that in about 20 years, they would self-destruct. And the first ones are the, are the real garbage. Yes. The first CDs that came out? Oh, except for one, get except for the German Philips. Yeah. They were really good. I think Philips designed and had a patent on the product anyway, originally, in 81. But in America, you could find a CD <laughs> And we can't go back to Penguin Feather and get our money back now no, either. You can't. So. No, no, you can't you go back to, to Penguin Feather, that's for sure. <laughs> or, or Waxy, Waxy, Kent Mill, or Variety no, Records. No, no, you can't. My we're mother, talking about record stores. What were some of the big ones when you first... My mother worked for Max Silverman. That, uh, oh, yeah? That, yes. And uh, she worked for um, Swiller, and uh -huh. she worked... Uh, she worked at other places too. She worked at department stores where they weren't record stores, but they had... Uh, the record section. The record section. Yeah. And so those were called racks. Then you would have a guy from a one-stop that would come in weekly and service your rack. Right. And he was called a rack jobber. That's gotcha. What, that's Didn't, never knew that one. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember going to Kmart in the 70s if I wanted to get records. Yeah. You know, Queen, you know, uh, would come out with a seven inch and I had to have it. Yeah. My mom wasn't driving me to Penguin Feather every week, but she was going to Kmart for the Blue Light Special every week. So right. I'd just be sifting through that, you know. And, the, you know, the record selection was cool enough. You know, yeah. you'd find something interesting. Um, it's yeah, true, especially the cutout section where they had a big table where everything was piled on. Yeah. And you could go through there and look at their 89 cent or 99 cent. Uh, albums now called classics. Find absolute treasures. Dark there. Drug did that. That's where I would get like Rolling Stones because I couldn't pay you know six seven dollars. But if they had those Spanish represses, I'd just buy that you know the cheapy thing that had six songs on it and yeah. wear out the groove. So yeah, um, thank God for the uh, original release not selling any. Um, okay, so g let's go back to the beginning then. So you, you were born in Alexandria. Yeah. Your mom was on the periphery of the industry because she was working in the oh, record yeah. store. She was so a, a seller and a buyer. Uh-huh. Both. And a buyer, how, how so? Can elaborate on that a little bit. Well, um, you know, you had old-time um, song pushers and record promoters back in those days. Yeah. Um, none of this applies now. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about uh, the way things were. Yeah. And uh, um, the the song the record promoter was the guy who went to radio stations and he would push uh, uh, you know a piece of plastic in front of the, the DJ or station manager or program director and he would say hey look kids love this band in this area right and they played so and so swimming pool party last week. Well, they they had these things, teen clubs. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give a few spins? You know, and uh, you know while you're at it, have an envelope for you. You know, you yeah, know right. you go out, you know, have a good time. You know, because it wasn't illegal then either. Right. So we're talking. This this was how things were done. Yeah. And you say, hey, thank you. You know, I'll give it a spin, and I'll open up the phones. And that's how groups became popular. Gotcha. And um, sounds like a pretty good method to me, actually. It's back again. <laughs> it's business, but it's, per but it's perfectly legal. Like you, you know, I I know because I have a record company, and you get these letters from yeah. all kinds of people. Uh huh. You know, give us forty seven dollars. Right. You will be um, you'll be guaranteed so many um, downloads, and. We'll send your record to so many radio stations, and you will be guaranteed two hundred plays. Gotcha. And it's perfectly legal now. Right. I mean, people were ruined through payola. You uh, know. Right. <laughs> and I mean, what's wrong? I mean, it, what's the difference between payola and campaign funding? Are there any? And you're supposed to take the camera go. <laughs> yeah, but but it, like, <laughs> but even more so, you can't rely on a DJ to necessarily have one kind of given taste. Who cares what the taste of the DJ is? Yeah, it, it, you, there's no accounting for what ends up on radio. Not then, not now. Well, you know, you'd like to think cream rises to the top, but. right? But in those days, you see, the kids did let you know. Yeah, you know, they'd, they'd call, call in. in and say, "Play that fast thing one more time." Yeah, you know. They would let you know what they liked. 